Hi, I'm Andrew with Baker's Gas, and we're here today to do an updated video on the Miller Multimatic 220. So this unit came out a couple years ago, and in this video we're going to go over what it comes with, how it welds, uh, all the different features that this thing has. Uh, so it is currently our number one selling multi-process unit on the market right now. Um, they've been awesome units, and uh, so let's dive in and we'll, we'll start it out. We'll go over the features here. So in the box, we got it unboxed here, we got it hooked up. You get your MIG gun. Get your ground. Comes with a stinger for your stick electrode, and then in the separate box it came with a TIG torch, TIG consumable kit. Um, in the TIG box we have the foot pedal as well. It came with a um, corded foot pedal. So I'll step around the front of it here. Now on this unit it comes with a hold on the side here. Comes with a one pound spool. Or I'm sorry, a two pound spool of wire. This is 030, just a Hobart. Uh, solid wire for MIG welding. You got your 220 adapter plug. We got it plugged into 110 today. We're going to give that a shot. Um, obviously, the hookup on this. You got your drive roll system. That all comes inside. We got our trigger wire that's already hooked up there. And then you got your drive roll tension kit or the drive roll tension here. And on the top of this sticker, so if you're just starting out, you're getting into this, you're a home hobby, and you want to do MIG welding, so this, this chart here kind of lays out what what uh, are good parameters to run and then also what wires to run or what what you should get if you're going to run flux core solid wire or stainless steel that sort of thing what the drive roll tension should be and then it gives you a on the 120 side and on the two, 240 volt side it gives you the ranges of what you should be running at wire feed speed voltages that sort of thing if you're getting into the mig welding side so if we shut that down now when you turn this unit on power switch is on the back uh, this is a pretty unique machine because it comes with two uh, gas solenoids. So we can keep both of our gases set up. So if we're going to TIG weld and MIG weld, it has two ports in the back. We got two regulators it came with, so we just keep them all hooked up. The beauty of this machine is we can keep everything hooked up. So we can keep the MIG gun hooked up. We can keep our, our stinger. Obviously, we'd have to change that out if we're going to do TIG welding, but we can keep it hooked up if we want a MIG weld as well. So just to go through some of the features on this thing, so when we get it, when you plug your MIG gun in, you put the trigger wire in, it goes to MIG Steel C100. So that's a 100% CO2. That's not what we have today. We have 7525. So we toggle up to MIG Steel 7525. So you can see it tells us what gas. Gives you the pictorial of where these uh, the ground goes, where your MIG gun goes. And then it gives you a range set. So right now, this unit has is equipped with uh, auto set. So we, it was on. This, if we shut it off like we just did, we just we can adjust our voltage and our wire feed speed independently of one another. If we turn that on, auto set C, where it gives us a target. That's our target. We're just giving it. We're saying we're running 030 wire, eighth inch material. So we can adjust that. We can go up with that, or we can go down and see how it changes your wire feed speed. If you go up, it changes your, then it go, as you go down, it changes that as well, the voltage. And we can increase our wire size too. We can go up to 035, or we can come down to 024. So it gives you three um, predetermined wire sizes. And then you can obviously go outside of the recommended parameters, but for all intents, we're just gonna run with the auto set. Now to go over some other features here, we toggle back up. So the first one's a flux core, no gas. This is this self-shielded flux core. Um, in the field or out in the home hobby world, a lot of people run just self-shielded flux core. So they don't have to buy gas. They're just gonna run that wire self-shielded. It runs good. We don't have any here today. We're gonna run a gas-shielded uh, steel wire. And then if we toggle down, we got MIG stainless. Gives you a, a gas to use. It says a trimix. Um, if you do a little bit more reading into it, you can use something other than the trimixes that it recommends, but it, it just for the auto set, that's what it's telling us to use. There again, we toggle down one more time. We're back to MIG Steel with a 7525 gas. We go down once more, we're at a MIG Steel with 100% CO2. So a lot of home hobby guys, they like to run 100% CO2 because of price. And it, and it works well, it's just, you're gonna have a little bit more spatter, a little bit undesirable weld appearance, but it does work. We toggle down once more. We got MIG aluminum, so you can put a spool mate 100 or 150 on this unit. Those are sold separately, it does not come with that, but Miller makes a nice uh, the spool mate 150. I've ran them, 
They're sweet. The only downside to them is feeding that, that one pound spool of wire through the drive roll system. It takes a little bit of finesse, but it does work. So there you go again, we can change our wire and our aluminum series. So it's set for 4000 series aluminum on the 150 spool mate. And we're at 030, but we can change that wire size. And notice when I change it, then we go up to 5000 series. So this thing will run both 4000 and 5000 series aluminum wires. And then you can change your thickness of material. Or there again, you just shut auto set off. And you can adjust it independently of one another. And that's for the spool gun. Come down and then this thing, when it came out, it was revolutionary because we can TIG aluminum with it. So it was the first multi-process, or one of the first multi-process units that we could run. TIG aluminum and uh, we can, it actually welds very nice on TIG aluminum. We're gonna try it out here in just a little bit. Uh, but the unit, for it being out for a couple of years, we've had it in a lot of places, demoed it a lot of them, a lot of garages, a lot of places. The biggest one is schools. We've seen a lot of them in a high school setting or a consortium setting or some sort of tech training center and they are running awesome. So great multi-process unit for that because then all your students can jump from MIG to TIG aluminum to TIG steel to stick welding. So it's just an all around awesome machine for that sort of setting. And as you know, in a school setting, we're running you know five to six hours a day nonstop on these units. So, and they're holding up well and we haven't, we've seen a lot of good feedback from them in a school setting. So pretty awesome. So TIG aluminum, we're gonna give that a shot. Um, then we have TIG steel or stainless steel. So we go, it gives you the setup just like it did in the aluminum, but where to put the TIG torch, where to put the ground clamp. And then it gives you a target setting. So you can change your tungsten size, obviously, and your material size there again on the auto set, or you can shut that off again and just go in and adjust your amperage. Now the pulser, this thing does have a, it's a unique to this unit, so you can pulse DC pulse only, does not pulse AC, but you can go up to 150 pulses per second and then all the way back down to, you know, 0.1 I think is the smallest we can go. So pretty unique, um, it, it, that, that's had a lot of traction out there in the world too because people want DC pulse for stainless, uh, so there again, what do you want to use pulse for? Uh, less distortion from heat. Uh, you can time your uh, filler material at addition to it, you know, with the pulse. It, it's pretty neat. So it, it's a good feature, kind of unique to this unit as well. And then obviously we got, we got our stick setting. So that, that right there, we got the stick hooked up. We're going to run a stick electrode with it. This is just giving us a warning because we don't have anything going on right now and it, it's just hooked up, but nothing wrong with the unit. So let's, uh, Let's give this thing a shot. I'll get my helmet on and uh, we'll run through some welding stuff with it. All right, so we got the TIG torch hooked up here um, in our TIG port. And it's got a through the, here I'll just show you guys real quick. It's got a through the gas port DINs connection. So it's 25 millimeter DINs. Gas comes through that port. So it's kind of a, a, a complete compact kit there. So you screw that in. It's just a twist lock, cam lock. Got a 14 pin. Uh, remote plugged in for our foot pedal, our grounds in, but as you can see I just left the MIG gun hooked up so we can you can go back and forth between the two. I got it on TIG aluminum, we got auto set on, we got 332nd tungsten which we're welding with today. We got about 8th inch material, it's roughly in there. Target settings 135 amps, remember we can go above that target setting or we can come below that target setting. But we're going to give it a shot now, if I shut auto set off, another unique feature of this thing. So. We can control our AC balance and our AC frequency. So if we shut that off, auto set is already predetermined. So they're going to give you 120, 120 hertz on the AC frequency, and then I think it's a 75% balance on the DC electronegative. So let's just shut it off, and then as you can see, we can change our balance and we can change our frequency. So we can go up to 150, but the pro set is 120, we're at 140 amps, obviously we can come down, we can just adjust, that's what it was just set at. Um, then we can change our balance, we can go up, we can go down, but that's pro sets, the 75%. We're just gonna, we're gonna go back to auto set just to, for all intents and purposes there, and run 135 amps. So I'm gonna walk over and run a, uh, just a quick beat on AC, uh, show you guys the performance and how it runs. Like I said, we've had nothing but good luck with this unit um, on AC TIG. All right, let's give this thing a shot here and see how it works. All right off. 
So that's on 110, we're at 135 amp, that's on the auto set. Well, it's really nice. Um, like I said, in the, in the field or in the home line, I know a ton of people that got this unit and they love the AC output on this. And so uh, a lot of questions that come up with this is if I'm, if I'm gonna do AC TIG a lot, uh, you know, majority of the time I'm buying this unit to do AC TIG, is it worth buying? Or is it a good machine to have um, for AC? And I would say yes. Now, downside is on 120, you're limited to a duty cycle of 20%, but you can bump up to 220 and you can get up to 60% on the duty cycle, depending on what amperage you're running. Um, but as far as constant AC output, or you know, you're gonna be doing it all the time, that's all you're gonna be doing, maybe a little bit of MIG, maybe a little bit of stick. I say the unit is, is very well adapted to do that. Um, now in a production setting, it's not an industrial unit, right? So it's more of a home hobby in your garage, uh, in a school setting, but I, like I said, the, the AC output on it's awesome. And, and to have the balance and frequency control, that's an awesome part of this unit as well. Um, but yeah, I would recommend it for sure for doing AC all, all the time on, in your garage or at home, or if you're just working on some little stuff, it's uh, doing really well. Let's give it a shot here. I'll grab the MIG gun and uh, we'll do a little MIG weld with this unit too. All right, so got go back to the machine here. Got the MIG gun in. Got my wire run. We're gonna we're gonna jog it through there. We're gonna go up to MIG Steel C25 because we got a 7525 mix. We're just gonna leave it on auto set. It's gonna give us a pictorial here on how to hook it up. We got it hooked up. We're not we're not changing anything. We're not unplugging our TIG torch. Nothing. We're just leaving it all in there. We're running 030 wire, eighth inch material, giving us a target 717 volts, 298 inches per minute on the wire feed. Um, let's give that a shot here. I'll get the big gun. I got the wire. And just a good rule of thumb, I take the nozzle and the tip out so it doesn't jam at the tip bird nest inside the machine. So it's just easier to, when you're changing out spools, just pull those consumables off. Um, and then you'll see here in a second. Got that. And what I do is I just feed that tip back over. And there again, we're running 030 wire. I must have a little burn. So, we're running 030 wire. I'm just going to put the tip, thread the tip back down, screw it in, grab our nozzle. Right on. All right, and we're good to go. So let's give this a shot. Here. Got our ground hooked up. Real nice short arc on it, so we're, we're, we're just in short circuit transfer, but uh, real nice short arc on it on 030. Um, real smooth feeding, I, I didn't have any trouble. I mean, uh, ergonomically, the gun's pretty nice. Um, it's got a nice ball movement on the end, so you kind of get a little bit of a wrist, if it, you know, wrist action on there. Um, nice little MIG welder, though. I mean, perfect for in the uh, garage or at home out in the field. I mean, it's, it's really nice. So next we're gonna try this thing out. Uh, we're gonna run stick electrode. So I'm gonna run some 7018 with it and uh, we'll give it a shot. The only thing that we gotta change on this now is, and this is the only, if you wanna call it a downside, it's not that big a deal. Unplugged our TIG torch. I'll go right back with our, stick, with our stinger there. So we got that. All we gotta do is toggle down the stick. So you can see how easy that is to do. I only changed one thing out. I pulled my TIG torch out, put my stinger in, tell us how to go. So we got 332nd, um, stick electrode 7018, and we're on some, we're just gonna weld on that eighth inch material. We're gonna bump it up here. See where, I can't change that, but we're at 70 amps. Let's give that a shot. I'll grab a 
stick electrode. Alright, so I got my 7018 here, 332nd. We're at 70 amps on auto set. Let's give this a shot here. stick electrode but smooth start you guys saw that smooth startup smooth art didn't cut out no no dis disruption in the arc stayed smooth the entire time and there again we're on 110 we're at 70 amps let me uh let me grab a chip and hammer here and we can we can see if we can check that beat out there so i chipped that slag off there and we check that beat out Pre ran pretty nice look at that beat i mean real nice beat for and, and like i said i'm only on 110 Great, ran smooth. Nice, nice unit. Um, all in all, this unit, I mean, really uh, very versatile. Like I said, we only made one change and we kept everything else hooked up and uh, very smooth. So that means you can set up in your garage, just have everything kind of right there set up and you can go from one to the next to the next and never really have to miss a beat. Um, so these units are in stock at bakersgas.com. We got promo going on right now. We're going to link all that down below. If you got any questions, comments, leave them in the comment section and we'll, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, thanks again for watching and uh, stay tuned for some more videos.